is also happening is a great birth. And those of us who are really passionate about this birth can see its signs very clearly. And as the crisis deepens, I think millions of people will see that a great birth is also taking part that a great birth is also taking place partly as a result of this crisis. And I'd like to spend some time on this great birth because as the crisis darkens, and it's going to darken unfortunately, we will all need to concentrate our deepest and most intelligent heart-mind on the aspects of this birth. I see this birth as seven stars that form a star of radiant hope guiding humanity forward. And these seven stars are the crisis itself, and that may sound strange, but what this crisis is, is an immense challenge to humanity to begin to live in a totally different way. And just as somebody facing AIDS or cancer in human life, if they want to be healed, will have to transform all their habits. So the human race facing this potentially terminal crisis is being challenged to change its way of being and doing everything. On the one hand that can be very scary, but on the other hand it can serve as a tremendous impetus to new vision to new action on every level. Mystics of every tradition talk about something which they call the dark night of the soul. And what mystics of every tradition know is that there comes a moment in the evolution of human consciousness where the human being has to undergo consciously a kind of death to all the agendas and illusions of the false self. And what they know is that this death is not the final stage of evolution. It is actually the preparation for the birth of a wholly new kind of consciousness that can only arise phoenix-like from the ashes of the old. The whole world is now undergoing the dark night of the species. And what those who really understand the evolution of human consciousness know is that this is potentially not the end of everything, but the beginning of a wholly new way of being and doing everything. A wholly new way of being and doing everything which will be born out of the ashes of the old. A humanity that has been chastened and humbled by ordeal will discover its own inner divine nature and will be able to act from that nature on every level, to preserve nature and to transform all our relationships. So that is the first aspect of the birth. The second aspect of the birth is the massive advances in technology that are being made. I've said that our addiction to technology is wrong and very destructive, but I don't believe in negating technology. Technology has great and amazing things to offer us. And I just want to take one example. Part of the catastrophe we are living in comes from our addiction to fossil fuels. But at this very moment, all kinds of new sources of fuel are being discovered. Ethanol and solar and wind, just to name three. And if you and I have the political will to put these new sources of fuel into operation, the addiction to oil that is governing some of the most violent foreign policies in this world can be ended and a wholly new era of production begun. But we must do this soon. It is as if the divine is illumining the minds of the scientists and technologists to give wholly new ways of doing things and to make them available to the human race. The third aspect of this tremendous birth is certain very promising things in the media. I've said that the media, by and large, is addicted to trash, pornography, violence, and a celebration of precisely those values of competitiveness and self-absorption that are destroying the planet. But 
even in the middle of the Babylonian circus that the media is, there are astonishing new advances. There are amazing spiritual films being made. There are extraordinary books being published about wholly new ways of being and doing everything. There is the extraordinary success of An Inconvenient Truth by Al Gore, which has opened the mind to global warming. And most of all, and this is very important for the future, there has been over the last 20 years a massive new instrument of global cooperation created in the internet. And we've seen from what MoveOn.org can do and from how it has changed the whole way politics is done, how a global movement of concerned people could be created as the crisis darkens. I believe passionately that what's going to save this situation is what I've called networks of grace. People brought together by the internet over very serious issues and over their heartbreak to work together and use their resources and their passion and their connections and their wisdom to solve the problems of the planet. This is an unprecedented tool given at an unprecedented time. And I think what the internet is, is a kind of image in human technological terms of the interconnectedness of the divine consciousness. So at the very moment when our human side is threatening everything by its greed, the divine side of the human has created this way of communicating to bring all beings together in an unprecedented unity. This is very, very exciting. The fourth aspect of the birth is something that's been happening now on a large scale in the West for over 30 years, and that is a mystical renaissance, a renaissance of the fundamental sacred wisdom of the world. It's as if the mother is standing in front of everybody and saying, do you want to wake up to your own divine nature? What about Buddhism? What about Hinduism? What about Taoism? What about yoga? What about vegetarianism? Whatever is your bag, whatever gets your spiritual juices flowing, then reach for it. She's saying to everybody on the earth, I believe, don't you see that you cannot go forward unless you are in intimate and profound connection with your divine self? You can have that connection in terms of your own temperament, your own self, your own way of thinking. And all you need to do is to eat whatever plate of food from my great glorious table really suits your palate. This is unprecedented. There has never been a time when all of the treasures of all of the mystical traditions are available for humanity. They now are. And what's also available is the technology of practices that can help us really enter the inner divine. This is mercy operating at a nuclear level of effectiveness. The fifth aspect of this crisis is something that everyone I think needs to be aware of in whatever way they can. And that is that our time is seeing an extraordinary phenomenon.